You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is, in fact, a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for the week of August 18th, 2023. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where one, two, three. One indictment, two indictment, three indictment, four. Four indictments make a bunch and so do many more. Over hill and highway all the prosecutors go, coming on to bring you the indicting Trump show. Trying him for all his crimes. You know he'll end up doing time. Tra-la-la, la-la-la-la, tra-la-la. Da, 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 da. Four indictments, three indictments, two indictments, one. All indictments playing in the cable news sun. Flipping like a pancake or cussing out the court. Rudy, Meadows, Sydney, and Clark. Okay. <laughs> it's the Professional Left Podcast with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Thank you for joining our show that's the end of our show today please <laughs> the merch is available in the lobby don't uh don't crowd your neighbors and don't urinate in the neighborhood just go yeah. home like a decent person <laughs> yeah so that happened this week yeah hey and and all of that indictment stuff meant a very short uh apologetic show on tuesday yes but uh here we are for a full show right we love you and you know it was it was kind of funny to get some emails from people I'm only downloaded 12 minutes. Is something wrong with my computer? Don't worry. (laughs) This show's going to be a solid 14 minutes. Just, you know, (laughs) cracking. We've got a lot to talk about today. We do. Uh, It it is indictment week for Georgia. Yep. And the thing that fascinates me about this, and we got a wonderful email just this morning from a person I'm using initials RK. Uh-huh. Uh, this the crime here is both siderism. Yes, it is. It, it, it wow, yeah, it struck me when when I read it. And so here's here's the email. It struck me as I watched the news of the Georgia indictment this week that the entire plot to subvert the election results and overthrow the newly elected Biden administration revolved around our political class's greatest weakness and perhaps your greatest contribution to the public <laughs> discourse. Hmm. The fake electors were nothing if not an attempt to both sides the Electoral Count Act. It's quite a reflection of our political class that the Trump's best chance to remain in power was to create a second set of electors who, no matter how fake they were, might be treated as equally serious, legitimate, or worthy of consideration by a media and political class who have made a habit out of both siderism. For my entire lifetime. You know, report the controversy. Yeah. Some people say. Yeah. Some people say Biden is elected. And And this was actually a huge week for both siderism. Uh, Without me, because why would you trust me? You're humble. (laughs) I'll get those. Just (laughs) Oberman, who insists on calling it both sidesism and who owes us five bucks for the licensing rights because he went on for 10 minutes about. Both sides, both sides, what a disaster it is, and media and politics, and he's blah, blah, blah. And he swore at least once. And I felt redeemed and also slightly insulted that he didn't mention. <laughs> I uh, don't think he knows we exist, but that's okay. Please. Oh, please. What do you think he's. <laughs> I, I, I thumb through stuff that people are doing and look at my archives or Digby's archives or your archives from 2004 and go, yep, there yep. it is. Inverse, yeah, this is where they're getting their information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you and I did look one an- at one another as Keith Oberman was like, podcasting um, this really? morning, going, "Really, he really, really? is t- saying something straight from our script, except right. both sidesism." Yeah, because he's got to make it his own by like, his own. So it's both <laughs> both siderism is what it is. But anyway, both sidesism is his way of pissing on it to mark his territory. So good for you. <laughs> um, this week was the week that David Brooks relaunched. A brand new David Brooks. It's a new wow. look at the new feel. Yeah. Um, because he gets to do things like that. The the New York Times senior conservative op-ed writer, David Brooks, is now the contributing writer for The Atlantic, David Brooks, which 
I wrote a whole long thing about this, but it's not surprising that he landed the Atlantic. The Atlantic is a, a home for neoconservatives and Bush regime dead enders and has been for years and years and years. Revolving door between the New York Times and the Atlantic. Um, now, what we should really do, Blue Gal, if you don't mind, is do this like they did it on Morning Joe, uh, yeah. which, which was kind of reminiscent of David Brooks on Meet the Press. Uh, I will read aloud from my post as Mr. Brooks basically read aloud <laughs> from his article. And then I say, what do you really think about that, Drift Glass? Yes. Well, and if you could uh, take it upon yourself to look at my post and take some sentences from it and rephrase them as questions. And then, <laughs> so what do you think of the Bible, David Brooks? Well, I think it's very important, which is almost literally how the interview went. It was the most fawning thing you've ever heard. It is what what Mika does, though. Yeah, well, this was Mika and Elise Jordan and Joe yeah. Scarborough talking about, you know, here's the problem. We don't talk enough about the Bible. You know, faith and Jesus. I'm, I'm like, is this the fucking 700 Club? Uh, but well, since... and, and my comment at Wonkette, which also tried to tread upon your territory with yes. with with a very good takedown of, of the great. Atlantic article. It was really I'm not, good, yeah. I'm not complaining about the quality at all. No. Um, David Brooks says people a lot. And we. And, we, and we, when he actually means Republicans yeah. and yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Um, the entire 5 million word Atlantic article uh, in which he, he used basically, he sniffed word clouds for yes. research. You know, I did, I did a word research on this Google app and you know, the word patriotism <laughs> shows up much less than it used to in the 1970s. <laughs> like this is your fucking research and, and, you know, cherry pick quotes from here and there. Yeah. Um, and aphorisms. <laughs> yes. Well, and, and, you know, he has a friend who's a nurse uh, <laughs> who gets, a, who got abused by patients and Amer yes, that yes. means America. I'm sorry about that. Oh, oh, me too. But his predicate is America is meaner and sadder than it's ever been yep. because, and you know why blue gal? I did the fucking math. Okay. <laughs> and this is David Brooks from, from uh, the morning Joe show uh, talking about how all these skills that uh, teach you how to be a better person about how to throw a great party and how to do conversation and forgive the abusive asshole in your life. And, how to dump the mother of your children so you can take up with a much younger research assistant and still get paid to sermonize about morality. All those basic skills about being a good person. We used to teach those everywhere, apparently. We teach union halls, churches, schools, uh, parks. Apparently, everyone was doing all this stuff until, until, quote, about 40, about 50 or 60 years ago when we just stopped doing that. Stop teaching those basic social and moral skills. Wait a minute, and, 50 or 60 years ago? And as a result, we treat each other often unkindly. I did the math. I, I can do math too, Drift Class. We're yeah. talking about 1963, 64. 65, 66, actually. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, because David Brooks has an infamous little story he tells about himself about when he was five years old. Widow David Brooks was at a B-in with his parents, his hippie parents who he clearly hates mm -hmm. and someone threw a $5 bill in the fire to demonstrate the, the, the impermanence of money and how money is not important. And little Davy Brooks grabbed that $5 bill out of the fire, ran away and kept it. And that was 19 and burned his hand off. Right. Yeah. Well, and he's been plunging his hand into the cauldron of culture <laughs> ever since to retrieve <laughs> corporatism and capitalism and save it from us dirty hippies. But it's, it's smack dab in hippie country. He is, he is going back to what he was in the fucking 90s. Hippies ruined America. And I, I wrote a whole huge post years ago called What Matters is the Work. That is a bunch of Oh, I thought you were going to say last night at two in the morning. Oh, I did. I pulled you did some that quotes. too. Yes. I pulled some quotes from this exegesis I did on a bunch of his stuff. But, you know, how the Woodstock movement killed Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> um, and how the, the Penn State rape case wasn't uh -huh. just because some guy was a degenerate and it was being ignored by the administration, but it was 30 or 40 years of ignoring social mores, the muddying the moral waters of the hippies. Hippies ruined everything. So the reason Donald Trump is here is because hippies ruined everything. I realize that that our podcast is somewhat done on the cheap. We have donated microphones that are really wonderful and we they love are. them. They're great. But otherwise, we're using used laptops and yeah. the Internet and so forth. So you might not be able to hear my eyes rolling back yeah. into my head. <laughs> click, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. But they are. Yep. 
And, and so, yeah, he did a whole long thing. Uh, this is all based on a giant article in the Atlantic, mm-hmm. which is basically the longer version of the article he wrote for the New York Times, which is basically the article that he quoted himself uh, aloud when Morning Joe and the entire panel at MSNBC um, rolled the red carpet out and said, please tell us why everything is so fucked up. And he it, gets paid for doing yep. this. And and I will now quote you from the article. Um, no, for, from, from Morning Joe. But basically, this is the Atlantic article shrunk down. Well, yeah, they read the whole article on Morning Joe. So, well, yes. And then, then they pimp it at the end. And yep. um, there is a whole the, – the word Republican is mentioned once in the entire article. Hmm. And it's a lumped into other groups that are suffering from Manichaean tribalism. Um, Democrats, LGBTQ people, black people, anybody who belongs to any group anywhere is suffering from this tribalism that's keeping us all apart. But not his friends on the Acela Corridor train. Well, they never get mentioned. Um, (laughs) And and honestly, the best part of it was the Twitter reaction from everybody. Because there are things that happen in the both sides do it universe that Mm -hmm. I think of as an unflushable turd has floated again (laughs) to the surface and all the normal people out there are like, holy shit, David Burke is still alive? And he's got a job at the Atlantic now? And he's still saying the same stupid shit? And the person who came after him with a sword in both hands was goddamn Joyce Carol Oates. Joyce Carol Oates. Yes. Multi- she did. Multiple award-winning fiction American literary treasure. Joyce Carol Oates basically said, you mean, I'm not quoting her directly, but this is the spirit of it. You mean uh, we're meaner now than when we lynched people? <laughs> Then when black people couldn't speak out because, you know, they'd get killed. I mean, we're meaner now than we were then. Really, yeah. David Brooks? No, it's when. And and the funniest part of the whole stupid thing is there's a caveat that Mr. Brooks buries way down deep in the article, which is essentially him saying, oh, and by the way, uh, yeah, uh, let me quote this directly. A couple of obvious things need to be said about the this ethos of moral formation. Uh, it prevailed alongside all sorts of hierarchies that we now rightly find abhorrent. Whites superior to blacks, men to women, Christians and Jews, straight people to gay people. And the emphasis on morality didn't produce perfect people. No shit. You know what mm-hmm. broke through? Civil rights, right. human rights, right. women's rights, gay rights, the fucking hippies, anti-war movement. All the things David Brooks hates are the things that broke that hierarchy that he mm-hmm. depends on for his livelihood. Mm-hmm. So I'm scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. It's a very long post. You should really go read it. It is TLDR taken to the TLDR level. Um, mm-hmm. Now, this is David Brooks on the Mika Brzezinski and, and Joe Scarborough show. And here's the we and the people, right? Right. Quote, in a normal, healthy society, we have politics of distribution. We argue about how high taxes should be, what the budget should be. But we don't have that kind of politics anymore. We have a politics of recognition. People don't want policy victories. They just want to humiliate the other side and affirm my own people. Tell that to all the people who had their student loans forgiven this week. Oh, and the, the infrastructure. The guy. Yeah. And once again, these assholes just eradicate the entire Obama administration. Oh yeah, everything yeah. David never Brooks, existed. Yeah, all the all the virtues he holds up as cardinal and important are virtues that Barack Obama tried desperately to practice, and David Brooks's fucking party tried to destroy him for practicing. He really is just you know, Jews and Nazis. Why can't we get along and find a middle ground? <laughs> huh? Why can't we just find a middle place for that? And maybe the problem is maybe the, those Jewish people should think a little harder about finding working a little harder. Maybe moral formation for oh, both sides geez. is the fucking problem. And I, I and I know I've said this before, or I probably said this before on this podcast. We liberals face the same problem on a much smaller scale uh, that 16th century astronomers like Tycho Brahe, Tycho the Noseless One, and Galileo and Kepler all faced. Hmm. There's a prevailing media orthodoxy about the nature of the political and media universe, which is ruthlessly enforced by the people in charge of enforcing such things. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, here's yeah. David Brooks from 2001 from the Weekly Standard, back in the good old days. Just read you a paragraph, then I'll move on. The article is entitled Competent Conservatives, Reactionary Liberals. We seem to be entering a period of competent conservatism and reactionary liberalism. 
George W. Bush has put together a cabinet long on management experience and practical skills, but liberal commentators and activists, their imaginations aflame, seem to be caught in a time warp back in the days when Dor Norman Lear still had hair, unquote. Hmm. That's the kind of shit David Brooks got paid to write yep. right up until the Bush administration went tits up and the New York Times hired him to write a different orthodoxy, which is, you know, both sides are really to blame for things. Liberals are still shit, okay? Liberals are still awful, but maybe there's some stuff in uh, on the right that needs tweaking, and that's where Both Sides Do It came into being. And Both Sides Do It has been the universal orthodoxy. It's it's the the um, the terracentrism, the, the geocentrism, the heliocentrism of the constellation of politics and media. The center of the fucking universe is Both Sides Do It and everything orbits around it. Yep. But we... Liberal bloggers have been using the methods of 16th century astronomers. We have simply been observing events as they actually occur, recording them over time, and observing how the media covers those, those events. And it became painfully obvious very quickly that this orthodoxy was completely wrong, that the right is the fucking problem that David Brooks is an enabler of that problem. Mm -hmm. And right. people who are lying about both sides do it are enabling the worst people in America by lying about the existence of this, equiv uh, this equivalence between the good guys and the bad guys. And that is why, like certain 16th century astronomers like Galileo, we remain pariahs to this day, despite overwhelming proof that we were right all along. And the mightiest defender of the orthodoxy remains David Brooks who, as I said, was relaunched this week with all the media bells and whistles. And now he's the contributing editor at The Atlantic and so on and so forth. So we all understand where we stand with Mr. Brooks. If you'd like to read a million words on the subject, you can go over to my <laughs> podcast, uh, a podcast, or I'm, I'm sorry, my blog, a post entitled David Brooks and the Triumphant Reprise of the Return of the Crepes of Wrath, because Mr. David Brooks really, really wants to believe that he's an expert on the secret workings of the heart of the working man. And he has no fucking idea what the working class go through or what they believe or anything. He also wants to believe that he is a professor of morality. He knows all about moral formation and he doesn't. He doesn't know anything <laughs> about morality. He doesn't know shit about the working class. But fortunately, knowing things isn't something he has to do. Because his job is not to do reportage. His job is not to get out in the field and talk to he real humans who live in the world. His job is to figure out what the rich patrons of the New York Times want to hear and then form for them a fairy tale that tells them what they want to hear. And the fairy tale they want to hear is that everyone's to blame. Everyone's mm -hmm. at fault. Everyone's in a tribe. There's no differentiation between left or right. There's no, uh, there's no acknowledgement of a political party that believes one thing or another. There's no belief. Everyone hates policy stuff. Nobody cares about policy. Everyone wants to just destroy each other for no good reason other than tribalism and rage. And it is so unbelievably dishonest and evil that this asshole still has a fucking platform on cable news and in reputable outfits like NPR and PBS, mm -hmm. the New York Times, and the Atlantic. And, and we all know why. Again, we have constructed a cosmology of why people like this succeed. And it's because they lie to rich corporate assholes who right. want to believe the world is this way. Absolutely. And, and Drift Glass, I thought that David Brooks's very long column in The Atlantic would be the pinnacle of both siderism for this week. No, no, no. no. But no. Um a certain person has waded into the Pentagon abortion standoff drift glass really? with Tommy Tuberville. Oh, great. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. And uh, is calling on the Biden administration and Senator Tommy Tuberville mm -hmm. to, quote, step off a little bit from their positions, unquote, that's and right. find a, quote, middle ground. Mm -hmm. Her view. Oh, I just gave it away. <laughs> Contradicts the White House and the Department of Defense, and it's uh, Kirsten Cinema. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Um, now, a great many people in social media have said, "What is the middle ground about protecting women's rights? Reproductive rights? What? Where's that middle reproductive ground? Reproductive rights. What's the middle ground there?" But a couple of people have said, 
what's the other side of protecting our national security? <laughs> I'm Tommy Tuberville is wrong about both of these things. Dead wrong. Absolutely dead, dead wrong. wrong. Right. Dead to rights wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's being a, you know, uniparty asshole about it. Uh huh. And uh, so here is Kristen Cinema waiting in. You know, she's going to charm Tommy Tuberville, who you know lives in Florida, by the way. Uh, and and find a middle ground, Drift Glass. Mm -hmm. uh, so it it is. It's it's everywhere. This this both siderism well, as, as you, and way as of you thinking have... that you're being a good person. And you know there really wasn't anything wrong in the 1950s, Drift Glass. No, everything was start. great. So why can't we go back to that? Absolutely. Idle idle time of white supremacy. Yeah. Well, as <laughs> sexism, as have... drug abuse. Yeah, as you have pointed out, and by the way, the Wonkit article is very good. It just, yeah, it's, talking it's, about how many women were on mill towns, right. you know? <laughs> yeah, zonked out of their minds. Zonked to, out of their minds, to yeah. With being, you know, in this oppressive, you yeah. know, suffocating environment. Right. And as you have pointed out many, many times on this podcast, mm -hmm. there is a compromise on the abortion issue. It was called Roe versus Wade. I wrote a post this week called oh. Roe v. Wade was the compromise. It was, it was the it compromise. It is at Crooks and Liars. Um, you can go read it. While we're on the subject of our posts, at, both at Drift Glass and at Crooks and Liars, we did a poll at our Patreon page uh -huh. asking if people would like us to post when we write something. And I don't write as much. I'm an editor at Crooks and Liars, but I don't write posts every day there. Um, but when I do, I could share them at mm -hmm. the Patreon page. And certainly when Drift Glass writes something, he could share the link at the Patreon page. Sure. And uh, it was 97% of the people want to know <laughs> when we write something. So I guess we'll be doing that. <laughs> I, that'd be fine. And, and you should let people know that I'm taking over the Patreon update duties. I don't know how to, how to do that, but my wife's going to show me. I'm, I'm going to train him on how to update because we skipped several weeks of not sh sharing Patreons with you. And we didn't mean to do that. No. Um, our angel nerd has moved on to uh, other duties and activities and so uh, we're it's we're on our own. We're not looking for volunteers. We're doing fine, but no. uh, we need to make sure we update that Patreon page. And we've got like eleven new Patreons this month. Yeah, don't know what happened. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Just share, and all of them have been five or ten dollars. That's great. You know, five That's or ten dollars a week or a week a month is five or ten dollars a month is uh, very generous, and we're very grateful to you for that. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I do want to take the, a moment to, to say thank you again to Tammy, our angel nerd. Yeah, she all did of the, a lot she, of work for just, us. She really carried this uh, the, the the administrative side of this site on her back, promotes it. For a it, long time. Just, for just a long for, time. For, yeah. for, for nothing, for volunteer. And yep. just we, we wouldn't be where we are today without her. So yep, hats that's off true. yet again. Yep. Um, what do you want to talk about now, Blue Gal? Uh, it's like well, I said. It's been a while the Georgia Rico Roundup was making all the news, uh, the Biden administration was rolling back Reaganomics, yep. forgiving student loans, celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act, and particularly its impact on climate change. Yep. And anything we're doing about climate change is not enough. Right. We understand that. But given that the Republican Party has a 96-page plan to roll back everything the Biden administration did, mm -hmm. it's more than what, what we could have. Uh, and then all the infrastructure. I'm I'm still astonished at how much uh, improvements to schools, to roads and bridges, particularly dangerous bridges. Mm -hmm. um, and and then this this right wing bullshit. It's just exhausting. Of um, Biden sent all of Hawaii's money to Ukraine. Right. <laughs> and. Uh, Biden sitting on a beach while Hawaii burns and right. just on and on. And then the, and the Hillary stuff. Hillary laughed. Hillary laughed over the indictments. Isn't she a terrible person? Mm -hmm. it, it fascinates me how many so-called Trump defenders are not defending Trump at all. No, they're spoiled. No one is children. saying. No. But he's innocent. No. You know, he's as innocent as a newborn babe. No. No one's even suggesting that he's innocent until proven guilty. They're saying that on MSNBC over and over again. But no one on the right is saying Trump is innocent until proven guilty because it's far better for fundraising to attack the prosecutors. Yeah. And say how unfair this is. Well, and, and we did a little, uh, uh, you know, a little uh, 
steeplechase yep. during the indictment. And over on the MSNBC, CNN side, it was a, a sort of a sober gathering of lawyers, whatever the term of venery of lawyers might be, a, a lawsuit of lawyers, a courtroom <laughs> of lawyers. Uh, and it was a discussion of the legalities and the breadth and depth of this. And you skip over to Newsmax and Fox News, it's, it's Hunter Biden's laptop. Yeah. It's all politics. Hunter Biden. It's all politics. Yep. It's all po- this is a political hit job. It's uh, uh, Joe Biden controls every court in the country, every prosecutor, state and federal, and they're pulling the strings. And that's they don't want to go after Hunter Biden because he's the real criminal. And, you know, I understand these people exist in the world and they can destroy our world and they don't come damn no, clear, uh, damn close to doing exactly that. But I don't give a shit about anything they have to say about anything. Right. Nope. I don't care how mad they are. Yeah, cry more. My attitude is cry more. Yeah. So when my wife, who I adore completely, comes to me and says, can you believe what so-and-so said about such and such? I just go, I don't give a shit. I don't care. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm done caring about what these people think or feel or want or anything. I am the guy in the Biden country diner that you should visit, New York <laughs> Times, and I'll tell you exactly what we think. Our collective pantry of compassion and patience and kindness is empty. We have Mm -hmm. tried all of that. All it did was make them matter. Everything we try to do to make their lives better, they fucking hate. And every time they they hate what we try to do for them out of kindness and generosity, the David Brookses of the world turn to us and say, well, see, you're being condescending. That's the problem. You know, (laughs) and, and it's not that they're crazy or gun nuts or they've listened their 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 skulls are full of shit from Fox News from 30 years. It's we on the left are too condescending. We're we're too mm-hmm. snobby, says the guy who now writes for the Atlantic and the New York Times and hasn't been out in the real world since he was five years old. Now, I did want to ask you something, if you don't mind. Well, I know, well. and I would just want to say I you can tell you can hear the exhaustion in Drift Glass's voice. Yeah, it's but Drift Glass, imagine being a black woman in America. Oh, I I hey, those are the people <laughs> I, those are I the just, people I defer to. You know, whatever. I cannot. What, yeah. I can't imagine what is going through the heads of people like Fonnie Willis, who have mm-hmm. worked all their lives to achieve what they've achieved, mm-hmm. and they do their jobs, and they get death threats for it. Everyone from Ruby Freeman to Fonnie Willis, it's death threats for what for standing up and doing their jobs. Well, because and you, race and gender. If you'd like to know what. Um, take the temperature of black Twitter, just do a quick search on Eddie Gloud Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I said, you know, that battle is going just great. I yeah. don't need to, I don't need to step into that one. Keep digging, Eddie. Keep digging. Keep you know, digging. He, he works up he at the, thought uh, that he could end the Clintonism in right. white America and he was wrong. Okay. It, it white America disappointed me. I, <laughs> Because he spent 2016 <laughs> explaining how he's not voting for either one of them. And he has a fucking platform. He's on Morning Joe. He's yeah, on Time right, Magazine. Right. He explained the why both are terrible and they're white people, blah, blah, blah. And the minute Donald Trump won, he was like, white people, you disappointed me. How come you voted for Donald Trump? And he's still fucking at it. And the difference yeah, is, yeah. the difference yeah. is he, he has one of those David Brooks platforms where there's yeah. nothing he can do. No, no amount of assholery he can perform out in the real world will get him cut and shoved right back down into the ranks of the unemployed where he belongs. Mm. Uh, as long as he has Joe Scarborough looking after him, take, making sure he has a place at the table and a comfortable place to sit. Eddie, what do you think of blah, blah, blah? Well, and it's just appalling. And then I look at the reaction from black Twitter and go, that's awesome. I yep. don't need, I don't need to say a thing applause. or do a thing. Um, I just, I just, I'm standing here going, this is this beautiful. It's a thing of yep. beauty, you know. Yep. I really and if there it. is something we can do, we are allies, and yeah. we'll take your lead. Let us know. Um, Period. Yeah. I did want to ask you something about the uh, first draft of our notes, um, which had been changed a little bit, and it was the you mentioned that for all of the celebration and all of the smoke a blunt, and drink champagne celebration this week, that this has been a traumatic week. Yeah. Well, we talked about that on Tuesday a little bit. Yeah. Um, just how disruptive to one's psyche it is mm-hmm. to realize how much of a criminal the United States of America elected right. in 2016. The Republicans elected. And this, the Republicans elected, yes. Mm-hmm. And white America elected. Yep. Uh, and really, it should call us to question everything about our election. 
yes. and how they're, they operate. Uh-huh. That should have been the wake up call to get rid of the electoral college. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have woken up. I mean, now the um, electoral count act is amended to codify that this ceremony that happens in Congress is just that a ceremony. Mm-hmm. It is not any at any point a point where people can object to you have to do that in the states. You have to do that through recounts in a process that is legal that where you can go before a judge and ask for things and do it legally. But what happens in Washington, D.C. on January 6th or whatever date is decided is a ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we corrected that. But this electoral college stuff is just an entrenchment of white power at this point. Yeah. And it's time for it to stop. And it may take longer than we want it to. But I know that, um, you know, there are states that are committing to giving all of their electoral college votes to the winner of the popular vote in their state. Yeah. In their states. And so that's um, going to change if if so many states do that. We're also going to get to the point where the next census or the census after that a Democrat will only need to win three or four states to win the presidency. I mean, that's the concentration of population at the coasts and in Texas is so great that that's how it's going to be. And then, and then Shane, you know, I I said, if, if, if it does get to the point and it will, I don't know if it happened in my lifetime, but it will get to the point where Texas will flip. And when Texas flips, uh, a whole lot of Republicans are going to want to throw out the the electoral college. Yeah. You know, so if I can draw an analogy, mm-hmm. um, I'm listening to a podcast, a substitute podcast for the big picture. I like listening to the big picture. It's one of the ringer podcasts. Mm-hmm. They have a guy on there now who's, who's doing a six part series while everyone else is on vacation on the Vietnam war, specifically mm. movies about the Vietnam war. Oh, interesting. And it's entitled, um, do we get to win this time? Oh, uh, yeah. sort of how Hollywood made the Vietnam war. I think that's the title. I might mm-hmm. get that wrong, mm-hmm. but he starts mm-hmm. off with, you know, the movies made, during and immediately after the Vietnam War. And you had, you know, John Wayne doing the Green Berets. Jeez. You know, in which case, it's literal propaganda. Mm-hmm. It's The end of the movie is literally him putting the Green Beret cap on a little Vietnamese kid and staring into the sunset in the South China Sea, which doesn't, the sun does not set in that direction. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's a whole bunch of, of, of it's David Jansen as the cynical reporter about aren't things going bad in Vietnam? And you know, we come to realize, no, everything's going great. And everyone's mm-hmm. awesome. And we're doing a fine job. And and then gradually you start getting documentaries. Mm-hmm. And you start getting Coming Home. And you start getting The Deer Hunter. And then along comes and Apocalypse. Born on the 4th of July. Born on the 4th of July. Of, yeah. And then you get Apocalypse Now. Right. And it takes this span of years for the country and um, uh, an industry based on money to come to terms with the fact that we lost mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the grieving process. Cause in that period is also patent, you right. know, uh, right. which, uh, which um, uh, is George C. Scott's speech about Americans love a winner and won't tolerate a loser. And there, and, and we will never lose a war because it's so hateful. The thought of losing a war is so hateful to us. We'll never lose a war. And we are in the middle of losing a war. Mm-hmm. And my mm-hmm. point being this, it took a period of time, and we're still not over it, um, to grieve, to come to terms of what we did, how wrong it was that we did. And Reagan came to office going, I'm going to redeem the Vietnam War by finally welcoming our soldiers home and having a couple little boutique wars to make everybody feel good about America again. But it took so much time after we fucked up really bad to come to terms with how bad it really was. But here's the thing. Iraq. Afghanistan, Mm -hmm. Katrina, the entire right wing racist freak out over Obama and -hmm. the election of Trump are just one massively traumatic event after another, after another. There's been no time to grieve, no time to sort of take a a step back and see, geez, where do we screw up? A million dead Americans from COVID. Yeah. Leave, All of these, don't forget that. Yeah. There's there's been no breathing space for us Mm -hmm. to sort of sit down and relax and go, okay, this is all horrible. How do we fix this? Because the right won't stop doing this. They won't mm-hmm. stop right. fighting. They won't stop being these monstrous assholes that they are. There's And so there's been no ability in my experience in the last 30 years to have a, an interval between a catastrophe, the lying about the catastrophe, 
and then coming to terms with the aftermath of the catastrophe. We just keep rolling through one massive traumatic shock after another, after another, after another. And some people thrive on that. Yep. And they're called, and that's the conservative media. And those of us who don't thrive on, who just want it to stop, for God's sakes, you know, are pretty tired at this point. Pretty right. exhausted. My question to you, Blue Gal, is can you spot the subtle flaw in this Alan Dershowitz tweet, which was retweeted by Donald Trump Jr.? It's very subtle. So that, there, there's your flaw right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. Let's see if, if the contents of the tweet also has a flaw. Yeah. Uh, this is Alan Dershowitz on the Twitter. Al Gore, his legal team, and I tried to find uncounted presidential lo- votes lobbied officials, and fought in the courts in 2000. The only difference now, the candidate's name is Donald Trump. That's why this prosecution is an outrage. Can you spot the subtle flaw in that? Oh, there's a few subtle flaws there. Uh Uh-huh. Al Gore didn't create fake electors. No, he did not. He did not pick up voting machines in friendly districts and take them to investigate them away from cameras or anybody. No, he did not. He did not incite a riot. No, he did not. In Washington, D.C. He did not lie about it and fundraise off it after the inauguration. And he presided over his own defeat he in did. the Senate. And, he did and like- insisted that a senator be there to question. Now, of course, Donald Trump had Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. But, that- uh, you know, he, he presided over that. And, and again, we said this before. Bush v. Gore was the template for Trump. It is create enough chaos so that the Supreme Court will n- anoint me uh-huh. president of the United States like they did with Bush. In fact, that might very well be the theme of our next No Fair Remembering Stuff podcast, Blue Gal. Well, it's really interesting <clears throat> how the Brooks Brothers riot is back in the news because of Roger Stone's video dictating a letter about state legislatures. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, he, he could, he's just masturbating at that point, but it is before the election. It's yeah. not like we can charge him with a crime for dictating a fantasy letter. No. But the fact that he was at the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. with the Proud Boys mm-hmm. and promising in a fundraiser video that he was going to provide security mm-hmm. for Stop the Steal. Uh-huh. The kind of security that kills cops. Yeah. Well. Roger. Deep state, honey. Yeah. Deep state. Yeah. They all should have complied, Driftlass. Yeah. All right. Let's do a news roundup. Yeah. Let's let's start off with some happy news, shall we? Yeah. The Biden administration has begun actually discharging student loans for 804,000 borrowers Mm -hmm. with a combined $39 billion in federal debt after a federal judge dismissed a lawsuit from conservative groups seeking to block the program. Mm -hmm. Uh, I heard from one of our colleagues, Driftglass, last night who um, went to law school and is working as a lawyer. And uh, he had $75,000 discharged and he still has private loans he has to pay off. Mm-hmm. But yep. the difference between 75000 between the difference between 125000 and 30000 what he yeah. owes now is 30000 Yeah. He said, I can now see a path yeah. a way to out. the end of my student debt where before there wasn't one. Well, uh, just I'm, congratulations to everyone. And you deserve it. If you've had your student loans forgiven, you deserve it. You deserve the education you got, and you deserve to have this freedom, this financial freedom. I hope that it blesses you and that you get 10 of your friends to vote for Democrats in 2024. <laughs> I mean, I other- think that's the, th- that's the impact of this, right? Yeah. Is that Joe Biden changed your life. He did. He did. And Republicans tried to stop him from doing that. This wasn't a bipartisan thing. No, no. So you need to say that to your friends at the bar. You need to say that to your coworkers. Mm-hmm. And not in a way to start a fight, but just, well, both sides. No, one side decided to make my life infinitely better. And mm-hmm. one side decided to try to stop that. Mm-hmm. And I will never forget that the improvement of my life and the, my future came from one side of the political aisle only. I, I don't know, Blue Gal. This new guy over at the Atlantic says that people don't care about policy anymore. All <laughs> they care about is making the other side mad and pissing on them and outrage, outrage, outrage. Yeah, no, um, it's not both sides. Sorry. Well, well the flip side of that is, uh, is the student loan forgiveness Biden's Katrina, Blue Gal? Let's, 
let's let's i'm just asking the question yeah some people say i'm i'm ready for my close-up mr murdoch um <laughs> this is from the new york times morning notes there was a time not all that long ago when being indicted was bad for a politician's career that time is over at least for donald trump the outrageous statements and chaos that defined his candidacy and time in office did little to dent his popularity within the Republican Party. Now his fourth indictment, fourth indictment, testing that support again. Can a candidate facing 91 criminal counts, including charges that he sought to subvert democracy by trying to overturn an election, win his party's nomination for the presidency? So far, the answer seems to be yes. Not only are Trump's indictments far from disqualifying for large parts of the Republican base, he holds a decisive polling lead across nearly every ideological wing, and geographic group in the party, but they are ensuring that the contest revolves around him. And that's, it's all about him. His, his fake news conference on Monday is- Well, well let me get into that now, because oh, yeah. Yeah. former President Trump's promised press conference where he was going to read a hundred pages and it was going to be irrefutable right? Um, to refute the allegations in the indictment handed up by Fulton County DA's office is now very much in doubt. They might not have it, Drift Glass. Why? Why multiple service, multiple sources familiar with the matter. Uh, this is from Mediaite. Quote: Trump's lawyers ask him. They, they didn't ask. They begged. But please don't do this. Please to cancel the press conference on Georgia election before he makes matters worse. Uh-huh. John Carl reports. Uh, and and the, the one of the huge problems in this for that side of the equation. First of all. Everybody knows he's guilty. Right. He's There's innocent a... until proven guilty in court. Right. But no one, even even Lara Trump is not saying, but he's innocent. Um, but he lies to his own attorneys. Yes, he does. All the time. So that just eliminates the, his ability to have a vigorous defense. Uh-huh. Don't lie to your lawyers. Don't lie to the FBI. Don't lie. And he's incapable no. Of he telling is. the truth. He's incapable of not lying. He, yeah. Malignant narcissism. It's a disease. Well, and, and when he's he, got it. When he, he says a thing, it must be true because he said it. Because he said it. Yeah. And, it's and the when narcissism. he wants a thing, yeah. it, it's his because he wants it. And because yep. he believes he's a genius, he will never get caught or, or be held to any consequence. Right. right. And right. he he's coming up against a, a wall that he's not going to be able to get over or around. Right. Now, he might be able to bull through it if he, hey, if he wins... He can just wave his hand and make all of the federal charges go away and delay the state charges forever. Um, well, the polling is showing that so-called independents, and I, I think these are people who are not interested in politics, yeah. not the people who are, I'm an independent. You know, the people uh-huh. who are Republicans who want to avoid responsibility are one class of independents. The other class of independents is people who pay no attention to the news who don't want to have any opinion about anything because right. they don't want to make someone else mad. Right. And that group of people who sometimes vote yeah. uh, really hate Trump. Yeah. The polls but... are showing they are exhausted. He's boring. It's like, it's like the 78th season of The Apprentice. No right. one wants to watch this anymore. Yeah. Jersey Shore. Oh, <laughs> no. Jersey Shore is a big deal now, okay. apparently. Well, I don't the youngest watch child either. is watching Jersey Shore. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, but you know what? I watched the graduate school drift class, Mr. Ed. The, so, the, <laughs> the talking horse. Talking so. horse TV show? Well, <laughs> that's kept me sane. Yeah. That was, that was my balance in divinity school was to go home and watch Mr. Ed. We should do a very special science fiction university on the animals of television from the 1960s. Yeah. Mr. Ed, Flipper, yep. Gentle Ben, Lassie. Yep. There's probably one or two more. So, And then you wanted to talk about Mr. Limpet, too. Oh, the, that's uh, a science yeah. fiction. The Incre- that's well, a that's, movie. But... That's our next science fiction university. It's going to be The Incredible Mr. Limpet, uh, The Day of the Dolphin, and uh, some of the Jurassic Park movies. Cool. Is there somebody at the door? No. Nope. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. A federal appeals court limited access to a widely used abortion pill after finding that the FDA failed to follow the proper process when it loosened regulations in 2016 to make Vifaprestone more easily available. Now, this following is from Brother Charlie Pierce, friend of the podcast in Esquire. Sooner or later, some loaded court will declare all contraceptives to be abortifacients 
and that will be the final end for a protected right of privacy. You could see this ruling coming from a mile away. Now, all the lawyers seeking to ban abortion pills will need to do is talk very fast and use the word abortifacient a lot. It's yeah. the Hobby Lobby Court. Yeah, they're coming yeah. for all, your rights. All pills that stop a pregnancy are abortion pills. Right. So, and anything that stops a, stops the sperm from going wherever it's supposed to go. Right, wherever God wants it to. Remember, yeah. every sperm is sacred. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's that was Hobby Lobby. And, you know, science said, no, those pills don't kill anything. Well, we believe they do. It, but it's faith. Our faith you see, tells we us. We believe they... that they do. So mm-hmm. we're going to not cover women's health care <laughs> because right. we believe that those pills do that. Um, from Jonathan Rauch at The Atlantic, quote, why not Pence? So this gives you a little bit of comic relief <laughs> from the... Yeah. From the taking away your bodily autonomy. Why not Pence? The former vice president might be the GOP's best bet to move past Trump and win in 2024. Except he's got Trump tattooed across his forehead. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Let me count the ways in which (laughs) Mike Pence is a a Q-tip. He's nothing. He's a pile of mayonnaise. And he's a pile of spoiled mayonnaise. And... He was a shitty governor. He was garbage in Congress. And the only reason he's not selling aluminum siding or back on hate radio in Indiana is that Donald Trump grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and made him vice president to make all those stupid Christians out there vote for him. Mm-hmm. And and Pence has done his job. And like a used condom, he has now been thrown away. So, <laughs> you know, you know, they tried to hang him. Right. I mean, you're right. aware of that. Right. Right. Uh, this right. is from Caitlin Collins at CNN. Quote, I'm told that Rudy Giuliani traveled to Mar-a-Lago in late April on a mission to make a personal appeal to Trump to pay his legal bills. Let me guess how that went. They argued it was in Trump's best interest to do so, but apparently it fell on deaf ears, unquote. Yeah, so sorry, Rudy. How, How could you have ever known that Donald Trump is a criminal who stiffs his lawyers and treats people, once he's done with them, like shit? You know what? Just ask Mike Pence. Yeah. From Oliver Darcy at CNN, the Marion County record has been, quote unquote, vindicated, but I don't think this is over yet. I no. think there are going to be a few lawsuits and a few oh. people going to J-A-I-L over to this. Jail. Yeah. That is what the weekly newspaper's publisher, Eric Meyer, told KSHB TV's Jessica McMaster on Wednesday, immediately after learning that the top prosecutor in Marion County had withdrawn a search warrant executed on the publication's office last week, a move that quickly sparked outrage and condemnation. And the uh, prosecutor is going to return all seized items. I'm feeling like democracy won, Meyer said, adding that his 98-year-old mother, a longtime editor of the newspaper who died the day after police raided her home, Mm -hmm. didn't die in vain. Well, that's one way to put it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's difficult to see the story through a different lens. The prosecutor overseeing the case, Joel Enzi, said in a statement that after reviewing the police force's application for a warrant, he had also come to the conclusion that insufficient evidence exists to establish a legally sufficient nexus between this alleged crime and the places searched and the items seized. Huh, really? Mm, Yeah, yeah. In other words, there never should have been a search warrant executed on the small but feisty Kansas publication as First Amendment advocates had insisted all along. Raids on news organizations, big or small, are exceedingly rare in the U.S. Yeah, for a reason. And the Friday seizure of computers, cell phones, and other material from the Marion County record, and apparently the home of the owner, former editor of the paper, the 98-year-old mother, it killed her, Mm -hmm. uh, generated enormous backlash. Yeah. And this is not over. The judge is now being investigated. Oh, She's yeah. got a history of DUIs, yep. you know, out the wazoo. Yeah. And uh, they're going to wish that they'd never exerted all of this unreasonable search and seizure oh. bullshit. And and all of this was was because the newspaper was investigating abuses and I believe alcoholism. Yeah. And a in bunch the of police department. Stuff. In the police department. Yeah. And so the, the jackboots came to her door took all her stuff, gave her a seizure, and she died. And eventually the judge caught up with him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What the fuck do you think you were doing? The prosecutor. Yeah. The prosecutor. 
The um, judge gave the warrant. The judge yeah. is clearly in bed, literally or figuratively or something. Mm-hmm. Pe- some people say. Some people say. I'm just saying some people say. Uh, speaking of um, prostitutes. Um, this, <laughs> fr- from, this one. Oh, my God. This is from Chanel Rion. Oh, I remember uh, her from the uh, Trump administration. Yeah, well, from One American News, the yeah. bottom feeder beneath the bottom feeding Newsmax, quote, meet the cheap backroom plea bargain harlot of Fulton County, Fonnie Willis, unquote. Oh, my God. And just to be scrupulously fair, if you've ever actually seen Chanel Rion, you know she knows all about harlots and harloting and such like. She's probably a past master expert on the subject <laughs> of selling well, yourself. She, she sat in the back of the White House correspondence room mm-hmm. being willing to say anything right. to make Trump happy. Yeah. She does she does the things other girls won't do. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. From the Associated Press, 35% of Americans have a favorable view of Donald Trump. That 35% drift glass. Wow. That's a pretty yeah. Enduring number, isn't it? Sixty-two percent have an unfavorable view. Among Republicans, seventy percent have a favorable opinion of Trump, and sixty-three percent say they want him to run for president again. Wow. So, seventy percent of thirty-five percent of Americans want love Trump. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a fifty-fifty country drift class. He, he's popular thirty percent of the time, every time, blue gal. <laughs> I, and this is when, you know, math wins because right. this 50 50 country, the Axios, so mm-hmm. desperately wants to exist, well, doesn't exist. I, I, I think you should just play this podcast, dear listener, on a loop and loop from that number right there. Blue Gal's comment about, you know, it's really a 50 50 country, <laughs> right back to the discussion of David Brooks because it's all <laughs> one big goddamn circle. Yep. Um, finally, from Russia with love, this is CBS News. The Russian ruble is now worth less than one penny, its lowest rate since the start of the Ukraine war. Oh, isn't that a shame? That's a real, real shame. You and in local news, a Chillicothe man was sentenced yesterday for the arson of the Planned Parenthood Peoria Health Center. 33-year-old Tyler Massengill. Massengill? That's yeah. his name? That's yeah. a douche. Yeah, that's yeah, a I, literal douche. I, I'm just saying. I okay. I, I had to. I didn't change it. No, nope. I don't know what to do. It. Nope, you wrote it in there, and it it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, he received a 10 year sentence and a 1.45 million dollar fine in federal district court. Massengill set fire to the center in Peoria in January. Get this, because he falsely believed that his ex partner had received an abortion at that clinic. Mm -hmm. How many levels of poor communication and bad partnership. And stupid. And stupid and pure evil are in that one person. The FBI Springfield field office special agent in charge, David Nans, said the FBI is focused on identifying, investigating, and disrupting individuals who crossed the line from expressing protected speech to violating federal law. Yeah. Huh. So, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, so we don't think Dave, good old Dave will be knocking on our door anytime soon since we don't violate federal law, but we do have a lot of protected speech that we like to engage in on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is KD, which stands for Kitty Doe. Oh. Kitty Doe as in John Doe. This mm-hmm. is Kitty Doe who brought, was brought to his human's house as an abandoned stray. And of course, Kitty Doe, KD, decided that, oh, this is my forever home. Mm-hmm. And now he just goes by his initials because, you know, he's not fancy. No. KD eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand. That the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit KD. And KD is part of a multiple cat household, but is apparently the most normal cat. 
in the house. (laughs) Whatever that means. So that's an achievement. Congratulations, KD. Sure. You can visit KD at our Facebook page or website, and you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and we love doing this podcast. We love you guys. And thank you again for becoming Patreons. If you can do that, we appreciate it so much. Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but the Internet Kitties are giving us the stink eye now that the young people are packing up and heading back to school. I've noticed. They're like, wait a minute, where are half of my humans going? And the, yep. the good half, the half I like. Hey, let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2023, DGBG Productions.